Increased cross-border movement from Zimbabwe to neighboring countries is threatening to reverse the gains made over the years in the fight to end tuberculosis. The country is losing most patients when they migrate to South Africa and other neighboring countries and default on treatment. Speaking during a capacity-building tuberculosis stakeholders meeting on community-led monitoring in the capital, programmers highlighted the illegal immigrants. immigration is threatening the country's TB response. We'll get more in the following report. In the absence of a uniform treatment package within the Southern African development community, there is likely to be disruptions once there is movement before a patient completes treatment. This has in most cases resulted in death as tuberculosis remains a public health emergency. In general, uh, cross-border movement is uh, um, attributed to about 10% mortality so in terms of mortality i think let me start with mortality because uh, that is the bigger issue having people dying of tb so the challenge is because people come in they are put on treatment and when they feel a bit better they go back uh, to south africa they go back to botswana and then when then then i'm not feeling well they then come here and then death then occurs in Zimbabwe. So we then end up having uh, that big mortality. But that gap is caused because of the cross-border migration. With at least 4,000 lives lost each day globally, ensuring treatment adherence is critical for Zimbabwe. The country is already engaging other SADA countries to ensure there is a uniform treatment in the face of this challenge. Most importantly, the Global Fund TB in Mines in Southern Africa has engaged in a cross-border referral system and the Minister of Health has been pivotal around ensuring that that works across SADAC. And that is not only working in Zimbabwe, but it's across uh, SADAC. And uh, as that cross-border referral system is being put in place and is being operationalized, it will curtail the challenges around uh, this, uh, this huge burden. But most importantly, SADAC, under the TB in Mines in Southern Africa program, they are also engaging in ensuring that they standardize the regimen, such that if you then get onto treatment in Zimbabwe, you then can continue to be on the same regimen in South Africa and Botswana or across SADAC. In Zimbabwe, it is estimated that 29,000 were, were affected by TB in 2019 and about 6,300 of these succumbed to the disease. Lost to follow-up of clients on tuberculosis treatment due to high human traffic across borders remains a challenge for Zimbabwe. It's a mammoth task for programmers as the country also faces an El Nino-induced drought. For ZTN Prime, I am Mirira Nsingo. Earlier on, we caught up with the Deputy Director, TB and Prevention Control in the Ministry of Health and Child Care, Dr. Fungai Kavenga, to discuss more on the challenge facing the country. He spoke on the country's picture as far as the TB burden is concerned. It's made significant progress in the reduction of the TB incidence over the years. We were removed from the top 30 high burden countries for TB uh, in 2021. However, we still have uh, a, significant, a significant case detection gap where about 40% of the estimated TB cases go undetected. Uh, the main challenges include um, high levels of TB related stigma and discrimination, uh, inadequate capacity in our healthcare workers to implement the TB care cascade, uh, as well as inadequate uh, tools and um, the infrastructure uh, for a sound um, TB response. So what we are doing to address the TB case detection gap is we're engaging communities so that we also strengthen community-based TB case finding. We've deployed mobile X-ray tracks to our communities. Um, we're also expanding the access to highly sensitive TB screening tools, and this will ensure um, adequate um, and uh, fast uh, TB uh, diagnosis. He also spoke on the major wins as the country pushes the TB fight. Over the years, we have adopted a number of innovations to try to, to, to improve the quality of TB services. One of them is the use of um, computer-aided diagnosis, artificial intelligence. We're piloting this innovation in six facilities across the country and once we have experiences and we have um, we've gone through 
uh, the calibration process will then scale this innovation up. We also adopted the use of um, a TB prevention application, uh, which will help healthcare workers to implement uh, corner investigation and TPT, TB preventive therapy in our clients. We are also taking up the use of what we call the drug resistant TB tracker application. This is a case-based uh, surveillance application where we are going to be tracking our data TB patients in, in real time. Then we are also going to deploy what you call the TB self-assessment application where our communities can self-screen for TB. We also asked him about strategies that are being employed in the face of the ongoing drought. We know that 80% of our TB patients face catastrophic costs due to TB. Uh, so for our data TB patients, we have a program where we give them uh, cash transfers every month and a nutritional hamper every month. With the El Nino induced drought, we definitely need to, to strengthen this, this uh, patient support mechanism because uh, vulnerable households will become more vulnerable due to the drought and this may affect um, the adherence to TB medications and therefore affect. Konapo Konapo, Ipapo Ipapo, Zetien Prime, DSTV Channel 294, the place to be.